up next, we have Stephen Bigelow. Stephen Bigelow possesses over 25 years of investment experience, including eight years as a stockbroker with uh, major Wall Street firms, followed by 15 years of commodity trading, overlapped with 12 years of real estate investing. He holds a business and economics degree from Cornell University and has lectured at Cornell and at many private educational investment functions over the past 20 years. He's the author of books such as The Profitable Candlestick Trading, Pinpointing uh, Market Opportunities to Maximize Profits, uh, and is the foremost expert on candlesticks. Stephen, welcome. Let's see. Good morning, uh, Kevin. Thank you for the intro. Good morning. It's, are we about ready to start? I guess <clears throat> um, I, might, I might have a little muted. Unmuted. Okay. All right. Uh, well, good morning, everybody. And Kevin, thank you for the intro. Uh, yeah, I might have a little bit of what Rob has. I'm sitting here right now. I just moved up to Pennsylvania, and we're getting a nice heavy snowfall up here today. Uh, uh, Kevin, I guess what the best thing to do is uh, during the session, um, if people have questions, if you're watching and you get a couple of questions, just go ahead and uh, interrupt me and uh, stop me with the questions. I'll be glad to ask que or answer questions, and I'll be glad to answer any questions at the end. Sounds good. And, uh, um, so my first question is, uh, how many? I want to find out what percentage of the people. How many people have seen my presentations before? Uh, why for yes? Oh, I can see some of the. I can't tell what percentage is. Uh, I guess a good percentage have. All right. Well, uh, what I usually tell people is don't uh, try to take notes. We're going to move too fast. Uh, candlestick analysis is mostly a visual uh, analysis. Uh, I started, I was a stockbroker back in 1975. And I was probably one of the worst investors in the world. I eventually got out of the business because I realized that brokerage firms didn't know any more about what made stocks go up or down than anybody else. The safest, safest uh, investment strategy was find a good uh, company and that was based upon the young MBAs coming out of uh, Harvard Business School, analyzing what their cash flow was, what their sales projections, how good their management was. But that had absolutely nothing to do with what made a price of a stock go up or down. Um, and I'm going to use the term stock in this presentation. Candlestick analysis is the uh, graphic depiction of what's going on in investor sentiment. So it doesn't matter whether you're trading Forex, commodities, uh, bonds, stocks, tulip bulbs. Anything that has fear and greed in it is going to be uh, uh, depicted about, about what... Uh, goes on in candlestick signals. Again, I've written three books on candlestick analysis is turning from years ago from being one of the worst investors in the world to where I was starting to extract money out of the market every single month. I had people coming to me and saying, what, what, how did you do it? And I just told them about candlesticks. Unfortunately, when I was learning candlesticks, I often tell people I was learning at a time when there was nobody out there doing candlesticks. So it was hard to get a second opinion uh, trying to learn this stuff, so I had to learn it all on my own. Uh, the only time I usually got a second opinion is when I'd go to the doctor. I'd say, what's wrong with me? He goes, you're fat. I go, I want a second opinion. He goes, all right, you're ugly too. So um, I had to go through, let's see, how do we go to next? I had to go through, and I discovered there was 50 or 60 candlestick reversal signals in the candlestick universe. But as I went through trying to learn every single one of them because I didn't want to miss out on any profit opportunities, I discovered out of the 50 or 60 signals, there's only 12 major signals that you need to learn. And if you learn where those, what those signals look like and what was the investor sentiment that created those signals, you pretty well have a grasp on uh, what makes uh, prices reverse or what keeps a trend going with the same uh, probably a equivalent analytical ability 
as somebody that's been trading for 40 years. So what I first discovered was that prices do not move based upon fundamentals. Prices move based upon the perception of fundamentals. And that's all candlestick analysis is, is when I start getting a little bit uh, hazy about what's going on, I go back to one simple uh, uh, concept, that the signals are the result of the accumulative knowledge of everybody buying and selling uh, during a particular time frame. And again, the, I'm going to use the term stock as my trading entity, but also the time frame is a very important because the same, uh, same is true whether you're trading off a one minute, three minute, 10 minute chart combination, or if you're a much longer term investor trading off the daily, weekly, and monthly uh, chart combination. So the basics were that the Japanese rice traders boxed in the open and the close because those were the final decisions that everybody made each day where they were going to eventually buy and where they were going to eventually sell. Everything else was just noise. If it opened here and closed above where it opened, it created a white candle or a bullish candle. If it opened here and closed below where it opened, it created a dark candle. Now that didn't necessarily mean the price was up or down on the day. It just told you what happened after the open. And that combination of signals or uh, uh, formations gave you signals that, and I'm not even not going to read this list because we're going to go through them real fast. And so basically, if you're looking at any trading method or uh, technique, what are you looking for? You're looking for signals and patterns that are going to get in the right place at the right time. And that's what essentially candlestick analysis does. And I show this graphic to kind of illustrate, do every, does every time I put on a trade, I'm going to make an 80% gain? Definitely not. But the nice thing about candlestick analysis is that every time I put on a trade based upon a signal or pattern that the Japanese rice traders have identified for us over the last 400 years as being a, a strong reversal situation, I know the probabilities are greatly in my favor that I'm going to make money with that trade. Is it going to be 80%? have no idea. It could be 0.8%, 8%, or 800%. I just know that when I'm buying that uh, situation, it's time to be in. And when I see a sell signal, it's time to be out. So a lot of uh, uh, investment promoters say, yeah, we made big money here. We made big money here. I'm not interested in that. What I'm interested in is what happened here and what happened here to give us that potential big price move. So the first uh, signal is the doji. The doji is where prices open and close right at the same level during the time frame. If it's a small trading day or a trading uh, range during the day, it's called a doji star. A big trading range, long-legged doji. Dragonfly doji opens at the top, trades down, closes at the top, looks like a dragonfly. And the gravestone doji, the Japanese race traders describe as the warriors come out of camp, they go into battle, by the end of the day they're beaten back into camp, leaving their dead all over the field, thus the gravestone. There's a derivative of the uh, doji, which is a spinning top, which has a little bit of a body, but looks like a spinning top. But they have one basic characteristic. There's indecision between the bulls and the bears, and this is very important when you're analyzing a trend. So the Japanese race traders not only identified what the uh, formation looked for like, but it would, uh, they also told us uh, what, the, uh, uh, what some, or some simple rules with seeing these. A doji at the top, it's time to sell. A doji at the bottom requires bullish confirmation to tell us that the bulls have taken control. Otherwise, the weight of the market could continue to push the market down. Whenever you see a doji, you always take heed because that tells you there's indecision be between the bulls and the bears. But here's the most important one. On. This is what will make you tons of money. The trend will usually move in the direction of how they open the next day after a doji. So as I mentioned before, I was one of the worst investors in the world. And when candlestick uh, charting came along, or I was introduced to it, I could see graphically where I was buying because it seemed like every time I was buying and everything seemed good, it would immediately turn around and go the other way. And I couldn't figure it out for years. But the Japanese rice traders just show you graphically what goes on in normal investment uh, thought processes. Where do most people buy?
they buy exuberantly at the top. Where do most people sell? They panic sell at the bottom. Everybody usually asks, how do you grab for the fallen knife? Well, uh, candlestick signals makes that very easy for you. Why I'm on this chart, I'll use this to illustrate that I, as you can see, I don't have very much information on my charts. I've got the 200-day simple moving average, the red one. The blue one is the 50-day simple moving average. The gray one is the 20-day simple moving average. The reason these are on the charts is that uh, that uh, every major money manager around the world uses these moving averages to make decisions on what they're going to do with their portfolio. As a candlestick investor, I can see graphically what is going on at those levels immediately. Now, we also have this pink one, which is the 34 exponential moving average, which is very effective for uh, trading commodities. But here's the most important one of all, this black line. This is what we call the T-line, the 8 exponential moving average. We call it the T-line because it's a trigger line, and it's got a very simple concept. If you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T-line, you can hold on to that position until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close back below the T-line. Conversely, if you're short, you can stay short until you see a candlestick buy or sell signal. No, I'm sorry. If you see a candlestick sell signal and it closes below the T-line, you can stay short until you see a candlestick buy signal and it closes back up above the T-line. Now, there's one caveat to that. The further away you move from the T-line, the higher the probability you're going to come back and test it. So overbought and oversold, I use stochastics. The number I use on my stochastics are 1233. I'm overbought if it's above 80. I'm oversold if it's below 20. So there's a very simple concept. If you see a candlestick sell signal in the overbought condition, the probabilities are extremely strong that you're about ready to go into a reversal. If you see a candlestick buy signal in the oversold condition, the probabilities are extremely strong. You're about ready to reverse that trend and go back into an uptrend. So the Japanese rice traders illustrate for us where do most people buy? They buy exuberantly at the top. If you see a gap up in an overbought condition, it's time to start taking profits. Now, a lot of people or advisors that I've seen through the years say stay away from gaps because you don't know what's going on once you see a gap. Gaps and candlestick signals are your best friends. You're going to make tons of money because if you don't know what the characteristic of the investor sentiment is in that signal, you know what's happening after there's been a, a strong uh, gap up. Anytime you see that indecision up here in the overbought condition, candle, or the Japanese race trader have a very simple rule. If it opens lower the next day, you close out the position. Anytime you see a gap up in an overbought condition and start seeing indecisive trading, start taking profits. If you see indecisive trading in the overbought condition and they gap it down the next day, it's time to go the opposite direction. <clears throat> the bigger the signal, the more compelling there is going to be a change of investor sentiment. Once again, notice your uptrend ever since a doji gap up, and then you see a go doji lower open that far away from the T-line. The probabilities are extremely strong that you're going to be going in the opposite direction. The bigger the signal, this is what we call long-legged doji, at a nice fry pan bottom, which we'll get to later. Then we had a long-legged doji. What's that basically tell you? There was huge indecision going on on this day. And what did they do the next day? They opened it lower and started trading it down. That told us exactly what was happening. The, the uh, investor sentiment had changed and it was going the opposite direction. If one doji means indecision, a series of dojis means greater indecision. Um, let me see if I can figure out how to. Bah, I can't figure out ever how to use this. Uh, see, I uh, show questions, questions. Ah, I I can never figure out how to work the uh, question area. Uh, Kevin, if you see enough yes, questions. If you see on the yeah, right side, uh, if you see on the right side, you should see a questions and there's a little uh, arrow on the left side of it. You just click on that, that uh, arrow. 
and it should drop left. down on the uh, the control panel, the go to web now control panel. Yeah, I'm trying to find where the uh, how I can expand that box. Yeah, there's a little arrow on the side of the word questions. There's a little arrow on the left side. Ah, there's okay. Let me see if this goes as this direction. All right. Okay. Okay, so I got to scroll. I don't know whether I'm in the right direction or not. I guess I've gone the wrong way. All the way to the bottom. All the way to the bottom. Okay. Yeah. Your screen seems to have disappeared. Is that the last one? Um, okay. Anyways, uh, Oh, if, if one doji means indecision, a series of doji means much greater indecision. And uh, if you see a doji in the overbought condition and they gap it down the next day, there's only one thing you need to do is close out the position and possibly go short. So anytime I see that doji up here, especially in the overbought area, I'm much more conscious that uh, if they open it lower, I want to close out that position. And the abandoned baby is one of your strongest reversals. This is where they gap it up in the overbought condition. The next day they gap it right down. It's a one eye or a one day island reversal. That's a very that tells you there's been a drastic change of investor sentiment. So if one doji means indecision, a series of doji means greater indecision. Get ready to take uh, profits if you see it uh, start trading lower. So again, the doji rules are: if you see a doji at the top, take profits. If you see a doji at the bottom, you need to see bullish confirmation to tell us that uh, the bulls are taking control. Now, because uh, candlestick analysis is very uh, obviously very visual, makes it very simple. As the further away we move from the T line, the higher the probability it's going to move back up to the T line, which tells us if we've got a buy signal down here, where's our first uh, area that we want to watch? Obviously, the T line. If it doesn't go through, we close out the position. Hopefully, we've gotten out flat or with a uh, small profit, but it's a trade that told us that the uh, T-line was still acting as a resistance. If it does go through, we know we stay long until we see a sell signal and close back below the T-line. Also, in the 35 years that I've been investing, I've heard hundreds, if not thousands, of money managers say, cut your losses short and let your profits run. The only problem is I've never heard one single one of them tell you how you cut your losses short and let your profits run. So if I see a doji in the oversold condition uh, and it opens positive the next day, what should I know? What direction should it be going? It should be going in this direction, which means if I see it open and I'm buying and it trades back below the doji, I'm right out of the trade because that's exactly the wrong direction of what uh, that signal should have uh, uh, told us we were doing. So if I see a doji after they've gapped it down, I start watching for buy signals. Or if I see a doji in the oversold area and they gap it up, that is one of your strongest reversals. That's, again, that abandoned baby. If the stochastics are in the oversold area, uh, I want to buy immediately. I had somebody ask me within the last couple of weeks, how many days does it take for you to confirm that your uptrend's in progress? And the answer is zero. If I see a signal and the next day it confirms what it's supposed to do, I'm buying immediately. Again, if I see a gap down and ends a signal, I'm starting to look for buy signals. That basically tells us maybe the uh, bulls are starting to take control. Where do most people sell? They panic sell at the bottom. When do you grab for that fallen knife? Candlestick analysis makes it very visual. The doji, after a gap down, if they open up positive the next day, I want to be a buyer. What's my first criteria as far as looking for resistance? Here at the T-line, if it goes through, I know I'm in a good uptrend. If one doji means indecision, a series of dojis means greater indecision. So using candlestick analysis, I can add as many pieces of criteria for being in a trade as possible. There's a bunch of flat trading dojis in the oversold area. The next day, they open up positive and trade positive. That's a bullish confirmation, number one. Number two, they've closed it below the or above the T-line. Number three, what are we looking for in our entry and exit strategies? 
well, if this is a bullish confirmation, where do we want to see it trading the next day? Probably in a bullish manner. If they open it back down here, that tells us exactly what we don't want to be seeing, that the bulls aren't there. But if they open up positive and trades it positive, what's that telling us? They're confirming the signal, number one. They're trading above the T-line, number two. Number three, it tells us this little downtrending channel has been breached. We now have a high probability of being in a very strong uh, uh, trade. Uh, I can't look at the five-minute charts on here only because uh, we're in a kind of a canned uh, uh, presentation with PowerPoints. However, if I'm trading intraday, I'm going to be going to the 10-minute, five-minute, and one-minute chart combination. If I'm trading soybeans or I'm trading live cattle or trading the dollar during the day. So if I can see a candlestick signal occurring smack dab on what every I know everybody else is watching, I know immediately what to do the next day. If they start trading it positive, that tells me the bulls have taken control and we should be in the uptrend. This is basically telling me exactly what's going on in investor sentiment at a major support level. So again, if doji at the top take profits, dojis at the bottom require bullish confirmation. If one doji means indecision, a series of dojis means greater indecision. And this is the best one right here. The trend will usually move in the direction of how they open it after a doji. Now, if you see a doji in combination with other signals, that's usually going to be a little bit more powerful uh, reversal indicator. A left-right combo is a doji followed by a bullish engulfing signal, which we'll get to here in a minute. That's that indecisive trading, and then bam, that's that right uh, hook coming around saying uh, uh, that the bulls are now taking control. Uh, it works both on the bullish uh, area as well as the bearish uh, uh, area. Left-right combo, doji followed by a bearish engulfing signal. We want to start uh, going short. And if you see that those signals occurring right on a major support level, that's that much more credibility that if they start trading above the T-line and breaking out through whatever everybody else is watching as far as the resistance area, uh, that it's time to, to start getting into this position. Bullish engulfing signal, very simple. It opens below the previous day's close and closes above the previous day's open. This candle completely engulfs this, uh, the body of this candle completely engulfs the body of this candle over here. Not necessarily the shadows, the trading range, just the bodies. And it acts like a neon sign that there's been a drastic change of investor sentiment. I want to start buying when I see the bullish confirmation. And once again, the bigger the signal, the higher the probability there's been a change of investor sentiment you want to buy on confirmation. And if you see that big signal and a close above the T-line, very simple. What do we want to see the next day? We want to see the bulls are still there. I don't need further confirmation. If it opens positive the next day and starts trading positive a little bit, that tells me the bulls are still there. I want to be buying immediately. So this is a very simple trade right here. A left-right combo closes right on the T-line. Stochastic's coming up. All I need to do is see positive trading the next day. That's telling me I'm confirming the left-right combo, telling me the T-line is not acting as resistance. And number three, telling me this downtrending channel is probably not acting as resistance anymore. I have a high probability of being in the correct trade at the correct time. If I see that bullish engulfing signal occurring right on a major support level, where do you think every major money manager is ready to buy? Well, if it's pulling back, they're going to say, shoot, I'll buy this, but I want to see if it supports on the uh, 50. As soon as we can see they're supporting on the 50, we're buying because that's where everybody else has probably made their decisions to be buying. The bearish engulfing signal, the opposite, obviously, of the bullish, opens above the previous day's close, closes below the previous day's open. This candle <coughs> body uh, completely engulfs this body right here. And once again, the bigger this signal is, the more compelling there's going to be a change of investor sentiment. It also allows, knowing some of these little techniques or these little truisms about uh, human nature, is where do most people buy? Exuberantly at the top. So if you see them gapping it up in an overbought condition, very simple. If they open this higher and start trading higher, I put my sell stop one tick below the open. 
if something's good's happening, it's going to keep right on going. If this is exhaustion and they come back down through the open, that tells me I'm going to have some sort of candlestick reversal signal up here. The bigger this signal and a close below the T line, the higher the probability this uptrend's over and the downtrend is going to be starting. Hey, Steve. There's your left. Yes, go ahead. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, we have a few people asking if you could explain what the T line is again. The T line the is moving your eight, yeah, eight exponential moving average. And as you know, or as, you, as we've seen, there's not very many people that use the eight exponential moving average but it works extremely well as far as a trend indicator, which tells us it's probably something natural like the Fibonacci number or the Fibonacci retracement numbers, that this is what human nature usually uses uh, as in uh, subconsciously or un unconsciously as a trend indicator. So again, very simple. If I see a candlestick buy signal or close above the T line, I stay with it until I see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T line with the caveat that if I see a candlestick sell signal a good distance away from the T line, the probabilities are pretty high it's going to come back and, and test that T line. Now, my third book was How to Eliminate Your Emotions Using Candlestick Analysis. And the reason I wrote that was I was discovering every, a lot of people were having the same problems I was having when I was trying to figure out how to invest successfully, which is. If, even if you can identify and apply uh, a good trading system, if your emotions still screw you up, you're not going to trade well. So I've written a book. The third book was uh, How to Eliminate Your Emotions While Using Candlestick Analysis, which was I would hate to sell because if I finally hit a big trade, my thought process was, what if this is the next Dell? If I sold here, boy, would I look stupid if this thing just kept taking right off and made millions of dollars. So I'd hang on to it until it was all the way back down to where I bought it, and I'm thinking, what the hell? I'm sorry, what the heck was I uh, thinking? Why didn't I take profits? And I did that time after time. Well, now I discovered if you see a candlestick sell signal, you can sell. If it bounces off the T line, it does what we call a J-hook, which we'll get to, I can always buy back in. I don't mind if there's a 12-point move on a stock price and I only get 10, I was out when it was time to get out and I got back in when it was time to get back in, that didn't bother me at all. All right, any other questions there? I'm, I guess my question and answer seems to be stuck. I can I can read some. So, um... So I know Jerry and uh, also Sanjay is asking, what is the accuracy of these signals? How do, how about false signals? Uh, there's always I mean, there's always going to be false false signals. I would say overall, my percent correct trade ratio correct trade ratio is probably around 67, 70 percent, right in that range, which seems pretty high. But uh, when I first started investing. When I put on my trades, it was because I was smarter than everybody else, and that price should be going up. And if it didn't go up, it was because everybody that wasn't as smart as me didn't see the logic of why they should be in that stock. And I'd get out with great losses. Um, the reason we're looking at candlestick signals today, after 400 years after they started being used by the uh, family in Japan that uh, pr produced them, is because the probabilities of them being correct are extremely high. Now, what is that exact probability? There's not a uh, set number, but if they are occurring in the right conditions of the market, and that's also a, a factor, the probabilities are always in your favor when you're using candlestick signals. Um, okay. And there, the, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, uh, Carlos is asking, what do you do if it crosses the eight-day uh, exponential moving average on an overbought zone you sell and then the next day closes above? Uh, if, if it came, came, if it produced a buy signal, I'm buying right back in again because what's our simple uh, rule? If it's closing above the T-line, you stay long. So there's a lot of times, and I say a lot of times, there's times where I'll get out of a position because it looks like it's time to get out. The next day they come right back up and close above the T line. 
I'll buy it the next day if it opens positive because that tells me I'm still above the T line. Again, it comes back to that concept. If if I uh, if that stock price is moving 12 bucks and I only got 10 bucks out of that move because I sold and then bought back in a, at a higher price as it was going back in the direction I thought it should be. I don't mind that difference that I sold out and then bought back higher was just insurance that I wasn't holding on to something that was going to start a big downtrend. Okay, and then Alan asks, uh, "What is the smaller time frame that you use with the moving average?" Oh, it all depends on what time frame. That's up to everybody's own individual trading. If I was trading the E-minis, which I did years ago, I would use the one minute, three minute, ten minute chart combination. During the day, I trade soybeans or live cattle or the dollar. I may use the ten minute chart as my bellwether, and when it looks like the ten minute chart is setting up, I'll flip down to the five minute to see if that's confirming the ten minute. And if it, if so, then I flip down to the one minute to see whether the one minute is going to confirm my uh, five minute even further. If I'm a, my most of my trading when I'm trading stocks, I'm a swing trader. So I'll use the daily chart to tell me when it's time to get in and out. But if I've got something that has moved dramatically out of the trading range, like a big profit move, and I'm well over went from the oversold to the overbought condition, then I'll flip back to my 10-minute chart. And as long as it stays above the T-line on the 10-minute chart, I stay long. But as soon as I see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T-line on the 10-minute chart after a big price move, I'll close out the position. Because the worst-case scenario is, if they take it down and start bringing it back up above the T-line, I can always buy it, buy it back in off the 10-minute chart. Okay. And then Sanjay asks, how about if st the stock is under no defined trend, uh, i.e. sideways movement? The stock can go up and down through the T-line? Uh, yes. And if that's the case, that usually tells me I don't want to be in that position because it doesn't have a trend. I'm looking, the, the whole point of uh, investing is to find a stock that's going to have a good price move, whether bullish or bearish. If it gets junky, I don't want to be there. And the reason for that is I can scan the 7,800 trading entities in the markets uh, for the best one, two, three trades the next day in less than 20 minutes each afternoon just because of the, uh, the easy uh, uh, visual aspects of uh, uh, candlestick scanning. Once I put it, the formulas in, all I have to do is uh, refresh it each day, and it's going to show me the signals or the patterns that I'm looking for. Okay, and then um, Tom C. asks, are you using the same T-line on your intraday training? Yes, all these charts are the same. Uh, I guess it, what you call fractal. Um, this chart, you could be looking at this chart, as a one-minute chart or a daily chart or a monthly chart. It's all going to look the same. And then Chris asked, does this work in the Forex market, which I believe you answered already, right? Uh, yes, it works in the Forex market. The only problem with the Forex market is you don't ha have a daily open and close. It's a free-flowing market. But you can set your time frames as 10 minutes, the hour, uh, four-hour uh, time frame, whatever whatever speed you're, you're trading the Forex. And then, Sanjay, uh, how do you scan? What criteria? Uh, very simple. Uh, I can put in the formula. If I'm looking for dojis at the bottom, I'm looking for dojis that are, are the stocks trading uh, uh, stochastics in the oversold area, less than 20, and forming a doji. And when I can come up with all that criteria. The next day, I see which ones are open to positive. That tells me I have a doji at the bottom with bullish confirmation. That's just the doji. But it's very simple to set up scans to find stocks or patterns. Uh, we have them all over our website. I mean, it's, they're just formulas, and they just stick them into your scan uh, software. Okay. All right. Let me keep flowing along here. There's your bearish left-right combo, uh, bearish engulfing, smack dab at a resistance level. There it is right there, right on the 50. I mean, you can make your assumptions very simply. If this stock's in a downtrend and they've come up and done a sell signal in the overbought condition of the stochastics right here at a resistance level, you close out any long positions and go back short, anticipating that you're still in that downtrend. There's only one formula that you have to know in candlestick analysis. Uh, let's see. Uh, Kevin, my, uh, my time 
is gone because I've got the uh, screen over it. When we get to like uh, 10, 15 minutes before I need to end, just give me a, a quick alert and I'll finish things up. Uh, there's only one formula that you have to learn and know in candlestick analysis, and that's the number two. In this case, this is the hammer signal, where the tail is two times greater than the body. The body can be uh, dark or light, but it basically tells you that the bears have knocked it down and the bulls have stepped back in. The bears have hammered out the bottom uh, before the bulls came in. What do we look for the next day? Bullish confirmation to tell us the bulls have taken control. This tail to the downside is a good indication that they knocked it down and the bulls stepped ba back in. What's our confirmation the next day? Begin to open positive and start trading positive. And if you can see visually where they found their support and then did a reversal signal, that tells you exactly what you want to know, that that was the reverse, that was the spot that everybody was buying and the bulls were starting to step in. Hammer, is that tail to the downside is confirmation, especially if they open up positive the next day, you're going positive. At that point, you just see whether it can get through the uh, fifth or the T line, if it does, you know you're going to your next resistance level. So what we're looking for on any candlestick signal is the signal, stochastics in the oversold area. The next day they start trading positive. That tells you exactly what that they're confirming the signal. If you see a signal and they gap it up the next day, not only does that tell you there was a reversal signal, but they're anxious to get back into that position. That's the exact criteria you want for being in a strong price move. The opposite of a, uh, a, a, a hammer signal is the hanging man, and that's reverse psychology. Every, the bulls are happy, the bulls are happy, the bulls are happy, then all of a sudden the bulls are nervous, they're trading it down. But by the end of the day, they take it back to the top of the trading range, and the bulls are a little bit re relieved. The next day they open it lower, and the bulls say, shoot, the bears are still here, get me out of this position, and that starts your downtrend. Hanging man, hanging man, doji, left-right combo. This is all indications that tell you the bears were starting to step in, and they finally won. And where did they do it? Right at the same level that they did a doji bearish confirmation uh, just a few months prior to that. Hanging man gap up with a hanging man gap down. It's time to be out of that trade. The piercing signal opens at or below the previous day's trading. Now, that's different than the bullish engulfing, where they, all they had to do was open it uh, below the previous day's uh, close. The piercing signal at or below the previous day's uh, trading, which means they've gapped it down and they've closed it back up above the halfway point of this candle. Again, that number two. That tells you on positive trading the next day that there's been a change of investor sentiment. The deeper they open this and bring it back up, the more compelling it is that they've taken out all the sellers and starting a strong uptrend. And once again, the bigger this signal, the more compelling you're going to be in an uptrend. Again, this is not rocket science. The family that uh, I think was the Homa family in Japan did not become wealthy trading this method. They became legendarily wealthy. They were the powerhouse in Japan for centuries. And it was all because they were trading based on human emotions of what usually occurs in uh, human emotions versus fundamentals. The opposite of the, the uh, uh, piercing signal is the dark cloud, where they gap it up above the, any of the previous day's trading, and they close it more than halfway down that candle. And this is, again, where you use your uh, uh, simple analysis of if they gap it up in an overbought condition to take it higher, you simply put your stop one tick below where they open it because more than likely if they come back doing it, they're going to do some sort of sell signal. If they open it and immediately start taking it back down, I quickly put my stop at the previous day's close because if it comes down through there, more than likely it's going to do some sort of candlestick sell signal. And in this case, a dark cloud basically tells us if they can close more than halfway down this candle, the bears are now in control. Shooting star, looks like a shooting star. Opens, big tail to the upside. Look how far away you are from the T line. Very simple. If they open it lower, you close out the position because where are they going to? At least back to the T line. Why take the risk? It may bounce and you can get back in on another buy signal 
or they could continue to be taking it right on down. When they gap up and do a candlestick reversal signal like a shooting star, get ready to take profits immediately. And if you start seeing these tails to the upside, basically tells you one simple fact, that every time the bulls take it, back, take it up, the bears are not going to back down, get ready for the reversal. The bigger the signal, the higher the probability you're going to have a, a change of investor sentiment. And if it does it right at a major resistance level, what do we want to see once we get to a resistance level? Whether they get through or not. At the end of the day, if it shows they didn't get through and did a sell signal in the overbought condition, that pretty much tells us exactly what we are looking at, that this resistance level is continuing this downtrend. Close out any long positions and get ready to go short if it shows weakness the next day. The inverted hammer, again, that opposite uh, psychology. The bears are happy, the bears are happy, the bears are happy, and then all of a sudden the bears are a little bit nervous. The pools have stepped in, but by the end of the day, they've closed it back down at the lower end of the trading range, and the bears say, shoot, that was close. Next day they open up positive, the bears say, shoot, the bulls are still here, get me out of this trade. Now, this is not, this is probably the least, uh, I want to say least, frequency signal out of the 12 major signals, but it's also the highest probability signal that if you see an inverted hammer, especially in the oversold area, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> and they open up positive the next day, the probability is probably 95% or greater you're going to be in an uptrend. And it also makes your stop loss capabilities very simple. If we, if that number is true, and I'll this is not something that you have to take my word for. Just go back through your charts, and if you see this, see what type of reaction it had from it. But if my numbers are true, that is probably 95% chances or greater that you're going to be in an uptrend, makes it very simple. If this opens positive, where should it not go? It shouldn't go back down below this level. If it does, it tells us the bears are in control. We want to be right back out of that position. Inverted hammer, Harami, tells us the selling has stopped. If they open up positive the next day, you want to be buying. And if they do this, now this is the bullish harami. Japanese harami means pregnant woman. There's her body. There's her little belly sticking out. And it essentially tells you the selling has stopped. And if you see that signal occurring, especially on a major support level, it makes it very simple. If they open up positive the next day, not only has the selling stopped, but the buying has started back in. If you see that selling has stopped signal, and they gap it up, very simple. They told you the selling has stopped, and they're anxious to get right back into that uh, uh, position. And notice where they uh, did this, right here on the 50. And that told us the next day they were buying. <clears throat> where do most people sell? They panic sell at the bottom. Where do you grab for the fallen knife? When you start seeing the candlestick reversal signal and then bullish confirmation the next day. So it makes it very simple. If you see a reversal signal, and the bulls have taken control, <clears throat> a close confirming the signal and a close up above the T-line. If they close it more than halfway down the candle that told you the bulls are in control and close it below the T-line, you close out the position immediately. Now, I always had problems with this because if I bought something because it was time to go up, I had a very hard time selling because my mental ego had already told me I was right, it's going to go this way. But candlestick analysis tells me, all right, I've got at least a 33% chance that every trade I put on is not going to be a winning trade. I just have to recognize when it isn't and close it out immediately and go on to another trade where the probabilities are in my favor. Barry Sharami, in uh, <clears throat> Western terminology, this is known as the inside day where they open it below the previous day's close, close it above the previous day's open, that pretty much tells you the buying has stopped. If they start selling it off, you close out your position. So again, this you don't have to be a high technical, uh, highly educated technical investor. All you have to do is recognize, just be able to see, and you can recognize the signals. And uh, I kind of put it in the equation of uh, the old couple getting ready for bed. And she's standing there naked in front of the mirror, and she says, look at, my, look at me. My face is wrinkly. My arms are thin. My butt is scrawny. My legs are spindly. And she turns around to her husband says, is there anything positive you can say about my body? And he goes, well, your eyesight's still pretty good. 
So as long as you can see candlestick signals, you can analyze what's going on in investor sentiment and know when to be in a position or when to be out of a position or going short. There's a hanging man, Harami. Starts trading lower the next day. What's our uh, potential? If we're taking profits. We have the time to take profits. If we see a confirmed buy signal back at the T-line, we can always buy back in. That bearish Harami followed by a gap down tells you the selling or the buying has stopped and they're now wanting to get out of this position with great enthusiasm. The morning star signal is a three-day pattern, big down day, a day of indecision, and then the third day they take it up and close more than halfway up this candle. When they do that, that pretty much tells you that they've changed their investor sentiment and it's a very symmetrical pattern. The bigger this gap up and the higher they close above the halfway point, the more compelling that there's been a change of investor sentiment and you're going to be in a strong uptrend. But it's a very symmetrical pattern. Down day, a day of indecision, and the third day tells you what their new decision is, and that halfway point is the important factor. Plus, if they gap it up that third day, that not only told you after the day of indecision that this is now a very strong decision to go the opposite direction which also makes it simple that if you see that morning star signal and let's say you jumped the gun and decided you're going to be buying because it was straightened up above the T line but it closed back below it didn't kill it yet next day didn't kill it but it needs to get up above the T line by the third day if you can see that they're trading below the halfway point of the candle that told you the bulls are in control you close out the position that essentially tells you the bulls are in control uh, you got anything there, Kevin? This is one that I, this is a chart that I use quite a bit. Say, there's our big hammer doji, smack dab on the 200 day moving average for the Dow. As you can imagine, as they, every, all the talking heads on TV were telling us how bad the economy was, how bad the market was, we could see what was going on right here. When would we be buying? Well, if we woke up the next day and the pre-market futures are showing the market was going to be up 140 points, we're buying right on the open because that's exactly the confirmation we want for a reversal. Um, we're buying right here when everybody else is buying up here. Now, I use this chart to also show my late friend Dave Elliott called this pattern a uh, blue ice failure where somebody's fallen through the ice. They've come up. They've tested it. They've failed it again. Where are they going? To the bottom of the pond. Um, and support down here on the next support level. Now we have a morning star signal. What's that tell us? Probably our next uptrend is going to take us back up to the 50-day moving average. Up here we see a sell signal, a bearish engulfing signal. Where's it going? Probably back to the 200, except notice what we have right here, a morning star signal. It tells us we're not going back. We're going to start back up to test the 50 one more time. And notice what's happening here. This is what we call a T-line crunch. They couldn't even trade it below the T-line. Um, and this T-line kept crunching the price up until we hit this level. This was a little bit indecisive. Told us uh, one of two things were going to happen. If they open it lower, they were going to trade it lower, which told us the 50 was a uh, resistance. If they open up positive, told us that the 50 is not going to be acting as a resistance. The second time it approached, tells us we're going to be in a strong uptrend. So the the visual aspects of candlesticks pretty much tell you what's going on in investor sentiment, especially at important technical levels. You see a morning star signal in the oversold area, that far away from the T-line, the probabilities are pretty strong. There's been a reversal. The opposite of the uh, morning star is the evening star signal, where it opens, the third day closes more than halfway down this candle, and if they, especially if they close back down below the T-line, you stay short until you see a candlestick buy signal, and you close out your shorts, go long. If it failed right here with confirmation, you close out your shorts or your longs and go back short again, but this told us they were still taking it up. Here's the strongest of all the signals, the kicker signal. You're in a downtrend. It opens here, closes here. The next day, they gap it up at or above the previous day's open and take it higher that tells you they've kicked the investor sentiment in the opposite direction and this is the bearish kicker this is usually me uptrend 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 I'm thinking about all the things I'm gonna buy with the profits of this trade 
the next day they gap it down below the previous day's open. My first thought is, oh, on this bad news, if they would just take it up one more time and let me out, but they don't. So you only do one thing if you see them gapping it down below the previous day's open, you close out the position immediately. The bigger they gap this up, the stronger the uh, indication was that there's been a change of investor sentiment and it will usually last for a good while. You shouldn't have a tail to the downside, but even if you do, it's still an indication that they were going this way and then they gapped it and moved it this way, you're going to be in an uptrend. If you're waiting for this uptrend to start and they gap it down below the previous day's open, only one thing you want to do is close it out immediately and then see if whether you want to be going short because that's a good indication that it's going down until you see a candlestick buy signal and a kicker signal back up. Where's it going to? The next resistance level. So gaps represent the enthusiasm that once there's a change of investor sentiment and they gap it up, that tells you there's a strong desire to be back in that. That's exactly where you want to be. Anytime I see a doji followed by a gap up, that's known as your best friend because the follow through on that is usually going to produce some very strong profits. And knowing what each individual signal does, you can see what happens in patterns. Here's what we call the J-hook pattern where they take it up, they pull it back indecisively and take it up. And I tell people we got into this trade do we always get into a trade at 15 and three days later get out at 45? Definitely not. But with candlestick analysis, it puts us in situations where we can get in uh, based upon, look at this big fry pan bottom, a slow rounding bottom that you couldn't trade one way or the other. And then out of all this indecision, they told us what their decision was. We're buying in here because it's a breakout. And then it had a good strong move. Again, do we always get these type of moves? Definitely not. But candlestick analysis, a lot of people say, well, I don't want to buy a stock that's already up 5, 10, 15, 20, 40, 80, 100 percent. You do if the pattern tells you it's time to be buying. Fry pan bottom breakout. There's your left right combo right at the place it broke out. Told us there was going to be more upside. A J hook pattern. This is what we call a classic. Fry pan bottom causes a very strong price move. A J-hook pattern has a prerequisite of a very strong price move. It pulls back, does new buy signals, tells us if this is wave one, this is wave three, this signal right here, big bullish engulfing signal, told us we were still in an uptrend. So how do we identify whether a move is a reversal versus a pullback? Because we know the characteristic of each signal. These are bullish signals. These are, even though it's pulling back, notice how indecisive it's pulling back. Doji's little spinning tops. So what's this tell us? That they're probably taking it back up. And if this is a J-hook pattern, which it is, we know that wave one and wave three are going to be equivalent. So if they do a kicker signal creating a J-hook pattern, where's our likely target? Right up here that everybody else is probably watching to see if it's going to be a target or not. Which if you're an option trader, makes for very easy uh, setups for uh, spreads because you know what your upside uh, potential is. We also can see patterns. Here's the fry pan bottom. There's the cup and handle. There's the do dojis telling us they're starting to take up. They break out through this level. Tells us we're going to be in a big upside. We can see what type of signals are occurring right before what could be potentially good breakouts. If we have a good breakout, we can see whether it's time to take profits and whether it's time to get back into a trade. This trade right here is J-hook pattern, but notice how it started. Here's a bullish engulfing. The next day they do a doji, and we know the simple rule of a doji. It's going to move in the direction of how they open it after a doji. And if they open up positive, we're buying immediately because now it's doing what we call a doji sandwich. Big bite, whoops, uh oh, didn't want to do that. Big price move, doji, opens positive, that tells us this day is going to be somewhat the same magnitude as this day right here. And if they do that, it's also confirming that we're starting a J-hook pattern. Fry pan bottom, we just went through a whole dissertation to say we want to look for uh, buy signals here. But if you see a pattern, like a fry pan bottom, which is a slow round curve, where are they going to break out? Usually when the stochastics are in the overbought area. Once again, we just went through and said we don't want to be buying on a gap up in the overbought condition, but we do if we know it's a pattern breakout. So we can see what each formation is, is setting up. This is what we call a slow curve. There's our doji sandwich. We know the results of a doji sandwich. There's going to be more upside. We know what the results of a slow curve is. 
If they break it out, it's going to be a very strong price move. I've made tons of money over the past 12 months just on these slow curves. I'm buying calls or stock right in here because one or two things are going to happen. It's either going to fail or if it doesn't fail, it's going to be a big price move. These are just setups to tell you the investor sentiment is kind of building back up. Look for the pop to the upside. Fry pan bottom, where does it break out? Right about where the pattern starts. Uh, again, these are just putting ourselves in situations where you, you've got a big upside potential. These charts work just as well on a one minute, 10 minute, 30 minute chart. If you're trading the YMs, you can trade it just as well off these uh, charts as you do a daily chart for longer term. There are candlestick truisms. The further you move away from the T-line, the higher the probability is going to come back and test it. So you start seeing indices or doji type days. If they open it lower, where are they taking it? Probably back to the T-line. Kicker signal tells you you're going to have a good, strong price move. This is another very classic uh, price move. They come up, hit a resistance level. Notice what they did on this low curve. They couldn't trade it, close it back below the T-line. They're pushing it right back up through. What's this tell us? Well, this is wave one. They're just now starting wave three. Tells me I've got much more upside. Tells me to get in. Also tells me where to get out. If I'm in an overbought condition, they should not be trading it back below the previous day's open. If it comes back down through there, I'm closing out the position. If I see a fry pan bottom, I don't have to sit there and watch to see when it's breaking out. All I have to do is put a buy stop right up here above the uh, the, the uh, tops. If it comes up through there, I know I've got a breakout and I'm participating in it. Flutter kicker, very simple. Opens here, gaps up, does a doji. What do we know about a doji? If it opens positive, it's going to trade positive. So if it's, we see it open positive, we're buying immediately. Because if you took out this little doji, you basically have a kicker signal, which means you're going to have a strong uptrend. All right, let me just zip through here. There's a dumpling top, the opposite of a fry pan bottom. Tells me when to go short. We can analyze the market. There's a bullish harami. There's your hanging man. There's your indecisive trading, taking it back up. There's your trend channel. There's your uh, morning star signal with a doji smack dab on the 200, or uh, on the 200 in your uh, trend. Told us where's our next target coming back up to the 200-day moving average. What did it do this time? When it pulled back, notice they couldn't bring it back below the T-line. I told us this was a J-hook pattern. But if they came back up through this level, they're breaking out. We have a potential of another wave like this. Now, what are we looking at today? We're looking at they took it up, did a shooting star, and a close below the T-line. Now they took it back up. But what was this signal right here? Well, as you can remember, this is not a signal. It's not a bullish engulfing signal. It didn't open below. So this is just an update and a downtrend. So when they close it back below the T-line, it tells us we're still in a downtrend. Where's our target? Probably here at the 50-day moving average over the next few trading days. So candlestick signals show extra force when you see a candlestick buy signal and a gap up. Very easy to analyze. Wave one, wave two, J-hook pattern. We're going into wave three. This is our classic. Coming out of a fry pan bottom, notice where it started breaking out right over here. Strong price move, pulls back. What's this tell us? That we're probably, if this is wave one, this is wave three. Because what is a J-hook? Strong price move, pull back going back into the next move. We just shorted this one not too long ago because notice what it did. Once it uh, did an evening star signal, gap down, hasn't been able to get above the T-line, came sideways right over the T-line and did a left-right combo. We're shorting on weakness because that tells us there's more downside. Or if we see sell signals and they gap it down through the T-line, we're short right now in ANF. We're staying short until we see a candlestick buy signal. Does this mean that in a down market, we're not going to find good, strong positions? Definitely not, because we can analyze 7,800 7, trading entities in a matter of minutes. If we see a strong buy signal like we saw in Mill the other day, there's your left-right combo, potential J-hook pattern, close above the T-line. Well, we're buying on a positive open because we got a J-hook pattern at the same time the market is heading down. 
were also in ARCW because we had a doji, uh, bullish move, gap up doji, gap up doji, bullish confirmation. Where's our potential target? Probably back up to where it hit a high. So we're, we're long this uh, chart, even though the market is backing off. But we always want to go with the flow. If we can see a downtrend and the market's heading down, uh-oh. Oh, no more attendees. All right. If we can see a downtrend and uh, we can see also, I don't know what this is happening. Okay. Hey, Steve, you could just uh, check off the uh, uh, do not show again. And just to let you know, Steve, you wanted the alert. You got three minutes to go. Okay. All right. So anyways, this is, uh, we just go with the flow. If they can't get above the T-line after notice what the uh, nature of this buying was. Very indecisive until they got to the T-line. Where's our target? We're still short until it hits the 200-day moving average. So that's about all I got. I tell people you don't have to overanalyze candlesticks. Um, it's like the uh, lady that brings her parakeet into the, the uh, veterinarian, lays it down on his table, just stone cold dead. And he goes, ma'am, I'm sorry, but your parakeet's dead. And she goes, oh, no, isn't there something you can do? He's been my best friend for years. And he goes, all right. So he goes to the back of his clinic, brings out a cat, lays the cat down next to it, and says, uh, Cat sniffs it, looks up at him, shakes his head, and goes, ma'am, I'm sorry, your parakeet's dead. She goes, oh, man, he's been my best friend. Isn't there anything else just to make sure? And he goes, all right, goes out to the back of his clinic, great, 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 is it a great big Labrador retriever, and uh, uh, says uh, the lab puts his paws up on the table, sniffs a bird, kind of looks up at the uh, vet, shakes his head, and goes, ma'am, I'm sorry, but your parakeet's dead. And she goes, oh, man. They go up to the front desk and he goes, so that'll be $250. She goes, you're charging me $250 to tell me my parakeet's dead? And he goes, no, ma'am, I would have done that for $18. Then he wanted a CAT scan and a lab report after that. So I tell people, you don't have to overanalyze candlestick analysis. It's just common sense investor perspectives put into a graphic depiction. Now, we always make an offer that people can't refuse. And let me see if I can stick it in here. For 12 buckaroos, let's see, send to all. I don't think that came through. Uh, Kevin, you have a link? Yeah, I already posted it, Steve. It's realtraderswebinar.com slash candlestick form. I already posted it for everyone. Okay, great. For 12 buckaroos, the price of two uh, Starbucks coffees, we're putting out, or you can get our uh, 12 major signals package, which is 45 minutes on each one. Tells you what they look like, where they work, what confirming indicators make them work, what the psychology was that created those signals. If you understand those basic building blocks of candlestick analysis, you're pretty much going to have the uh, uh, an analytical ability of a 40-year veteran. Um, and that package usually sells for $581. But wait, there's more. You also get 30-day free trial to our website. And our website consists of each day we have the chat room open. We usually have about 250, 270 people in there with all levels of education on candlestick analysis, but all looking for the same chart patterns and signals um, and trading in all, all uh, time frames, whether they're scalpers, day traders, uh, swing traders, long-term investors. You're going to find people that can answer questions as you're learning how to use candlesticks, uh, and they come up with some very excellent trades. Also, Monday nights, I do an hour and a half of what the markets are doing, what signals look good, what the currencies are doing, the commodities. We do a free one on, on Saturday or on Thursday night. <clears throat> Plus, things like uh, oh, the techniques for how do you set your stop losses how your entry and exit strategies work uh, effectively with candlesticks, how to scan for the best possible trades. Instead of paying for the videos, we do those uh, sessions maybe three or four times a month. Usually we charge anywhere from $95 to $180 for those sessions. So on top of uh, your free membership, you're getting three, dollars $400 worth of training each month, but that's all free to the membership. Now, we're not trying to trick people into becoming candlestick members. Uh, after, if you try the trial period, 
for 12 bucks. After 30 days, you're going to get a message saying, if you like what you see, you can stay on. I think the uh, the monthly rate is $97 a month or $241 for a quarter. Um, and I think Sam, or Pat, my marketing person, has on there that if you buy the 12-month uh, package, instead of $907, it's only like $500. $82. But you get, again, two or three hundred dollars worth of training each month. Um, tons, a lot of, we have a website right now that's probably over 1,300 pages of information on how to use, how to use candlesticks effectively. So with that, Kevin, are there, do we have time for any more questions or did I take us right up to the, uh, yeah, uh, it's 1202. We have to move on, Steve. Okay. Thank you so right, much. Well, thank you, everybody. Yep, and thank you for the invite today. I uh, hope everybody's staying inside and staying warm. Thank you. A special thanks to Stephen Bigelow. Um, and the jokes had me had me in absolute stitches. Uh, so everyone, uh, just want to let everyone know. We just want to say a special thanks again. If you want to check out Steve's offer, go over to uh, realtraderswebinar.com slash candlestick forum. 